A little over five years ago, Lexus introduced a stunning new luxury coupe to their lineup known as the LC. Now, the LC was designed to replace the old SC, and unlike its predecessor, Lexus designed this vehicle to instill some lust into enthusiasts' hearts, especially when it wanted to go head-to-head -head with competitors from Aston Martin, Bentley, BMW, Mercedes, and of course, Porsche. Now, fast forward five years, and I'm standing by this 2022 Lexus LC 500, of course, equipped with the five-liter naturally aspirated V8, and its design, even though it's been on the market for a few years, still turns a lot of heads. So this week, we're gonna put the LC500 through our usual battery of tests, and at the end of this video, I'm gonna find out, does this 2022 version still have what it takes to compete with Uber luxury Grand Touring Coupes? Stay tuned to find out. Now, if you guys aren't suckered in by the exterior design of this car, you should also buy it for what's powering the vehicle underneath the hood because this vehicle has a naturally aspirated V8, a power plant that's probably going to be phased out in the next couple of years. Now, when Lexus first launched this car, they offered it with two different powertrains. They, they continue to still offer a three-motor hybrid type system. However, the convertible version that I'm showing you here only comes with the good engine. This is a five liter naturally aspirated V8 with direct and port injection and variable valve timing. It makes 471 horsepower and 389 pound-feet of torque. This vehicle is only rear wheel drive. You can also get it with a limited slip differential and it only goes out through a 10 speed Lexus design transmission. There is no manual transmission available. Available. Like I mentioned earlier, this car is only rear wheel drive. It's rated to get 15 in the city, 25 on the highway. Premium gas, of course, is going to be recommended or required. Uh, in a world full of $5 gallon gas, obviously this is not the kind of vehicle you want to drive, but if you guys do care about that, you can also get the hybrid, which should get about 25 to 30% better MPG, but you also sacrifice a little over 100 horsepower. Now, Lexus says this combination is good for zero to 60 in 4.7 seconds. Uh, we've got our equipment, our equipment, we'll go ahead and we'll test that out. And as this car sits, it is a really heavy car, even by luxury convertible standards. This one here weighs in at just over 4,500 pounds. But let's go ahead and shut the hood and show you guys the styling of this vehicle. As you can see, this car, even though it's been on the market for a few years in this smoky granite metallic exterior color, seriously, seriously still looks like a concept car, uh, especially when you have it in the certain color combinations. This gray isn't my first choice in terms of colors, but it really does hide dirt well. It also shows off the lines really well. You can see all LCs come standard with their triple beam, full LED headlights. They're kind of like a trippy design with this little Nike swoosh for an LED daytime running light. You also have LED turn signals down here. Uh, you have functional air vents in the front and the rear. You can see this model here with the chrome and the silver accents with the headlights. It just looks low and wide and it still turns a lot of heads. I'm really shocked at how well this car has aged in terms of its design. And it really shows when you see it in you know certain colors. I also think the convertible model looks great with the power soft top. My top has my my tester has the sand beige colored top. These are the optional 21 inch uh, polished five spoke wheels. You can see with kind of like a chrome finish with the black inserts. It looks good. You have two 45 40 series tires at the front. They're even fatter. Two 75s at the rear. Remember, this is a rear drive car. You also have these upgraded four piston uh, brakes at the front. These are going to be high performance brakes uh, and you can see my tester also has summer performance tires that you get with these 21 inch wheels now the lc is not a small vehicle at 187 inches long this is about 10 inches longer versus a lot of its competitors uh, and it has a 114 inch long wheelbase this was the first vehicle to ride on the global architectural luxury platform uh, and then all the other lexus vehicles now uh, use the same platform, uh, which again is a great place to start. Now looking at the rear, you can see the taillights on this car still look very unique. You have like a three-dimensional look here with the full LED taillights, LED turn signals. They look great when they're lit up and it really shows off the lines of this vehicle. Um, if you guys go for the coupe, you'll get a pop-out deployable power rear spoiler, which really also improves the look of the car. On the convertible, it looks a little bit naked without it, but you can see there's a very subtle LC500 badge. The exhaust system you can see is nicely integrated into the rear bumper along with your reverse light. The exhaust system of this car is the reason why you wanna buy it if the styling doesn't uh, pull you in. We'll go ahead and fire it up so you can hear what the engine sounds like.
definitely going to miss a sweet sounding naturally aspirated V8 in the world of electric vehicles. Now opening up the trunk, you can see there's a button here that opens up the cargo area and the convertible, you definitely have to make a sacrifice there. This has roughly 3.5 cubic feet of space. You can see it's a very shallow trunk. It's not very deep whatsoever. Uh, there is not really any underfloor storage in this vehicle. There's no spare tire. Uh, but there's no front, as you guys saw. Instead, you just have this very small trunk, but there is also a small back seat where you could also put a few packages and stuff back there. Let's go ahead and take a look at the interior of the 2022 Lexus LC500 convertible. You can see as it starts to rain a little bit harder, I wanna show you guys the key fob for this car. Uh, this is the typical Lexus fob. It's got a little kind of a cover over the fob. Uh, you can also use the Lexus app, I believe, to access this vehicle and use the remote start. You can see the door handles, they pop in and out. So when the vehicle is locked, the mirrors fold in and then the door handle retracts back in. When it's unlocked, uh, you can see the door handle will pop back out. So it allows you to actually open up the vehicle. Now you can see my tester's gray exterior is ox uh, accented by this lovely toasted caramel interior. I love this beautiful interior color combination. It's not necessarily my first choice, but I do think it goes well with the gray exterior. I love how it's kind of I carried over onto the door panels here. Even the steering wheel has painted in this toasted caramel color along with the carpet. I think it looks really classy. It looks really expensive. Uh, the seats you can see adjust in 14 different ways. They are heated and ventilated. That's included if you guys go for a touring package. Uh, and you can see the rest of the cabin still looks pretty nice. Although once you get inside the interior, you can see there are a couple of dated, more dated elements of the interior. As I get in and shut the door, the door has a solid sounding thunk, which is part of the whole global architectural luxury platform, which is nice. And then you can see here the start stop button is where you'd expect it to be. Turning on the vehicle, you can see there's a power tilt and telescoping steering wheel. You have this Lexus LFA inspired gauge cluster. The screens do this really uh, interesting starter or startup uh, sequence. And then you can see here this 10.3 inch display is definitely looking small. It does have Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, but it's not wireless. And as you can see, this is also not a touchscreen. This is the old Lexus interface with their trackpad controller, which is not something that uh, I've liked in the past. And I'm really shocked, surprisingly, how Lexus hasn't put their new Lexus interface system in here. Now they will have to redesign the dash here to bring the screen out and make it closer so you can actually use it as a touch screen. But uh, aside from this really old display, which still uses this horrible trackpad uh, and it has the older interface in here, it's perfectly fine. It just, I think that Lexus has definitely shown that they can move on past this and have a much better system that's easier to use, that looks a lot more impressive and looks a lot more modern. But what is impressive about this interior is still the materials. You can see door panel has a beautiful soft touch injection molded leather material, full leather basically along the entire door panel except for here, but it is padded. It's nice and padded down here at the lower portion. The window controls, one touch up down for all of them. You can see they're accented in some nice chrome. You have power folding mirrors. You have three person memory seats on the driver's side. And then you can see here the steering wall, as I mentioned earlier, is a power tilt and telescoping. Uh, you have real metal paddle shifters connected to the wheel, typical Lexus buttons. These, This is technically the older Lexus steering wheel, but I love how there's actually leather on the airbag cover. The horn. Sounds pretty good. It's not puny sounding. It's very uh, typical sounding for a vehicle of this size and caliber. Uh, there's some suede Alcantara here on the instrument panel hood, real leather again along the entire dashboard. That's how you access the snow mode and turn off the traction control. This is your other drive mode selector, which if you start twisting this up, it'll go into sport and then sport plus, or you can also kick it down to go into eco or, or comfort mode and then push it in to go into a normal mode. You can also do a custom mode as well. I love the way the gauge looks. Uh, and then I also love how when you push this button here, the tachometer swings over to the right and it reveals the uh, a little bit larger infor information screen over there where you can kind of customize how that looks by using the buttons on the steering wheel. This looks good, although it's still, it looks a little bit small, but it's definitely a unique feature how the tack actually moves, uh, which I think is a great touch. Over here on the rest of the dash, you can see full leather along the entire dash panel. There's this really interesting, cool uh, three-dimensional look to the plastic panel behind the little plexiglass. There's real aluminum trim over here. Uh, you can also get this with like a black or a red interior. And then over here, you can see surprisingly still a CD chain or CD player in here. That kind of shows how old this Lexus actually is. It was, its design came out in the mid 2010 era. Uh, you can see here, uh, one cup holder over here. The trackpad is over here as well with the volume control. You have a tuning knob. Uh, as well, you have separate hard cut buttons. And if you look at this shifter, it's electronic where I have to go to the left first and then click it, 
kick it up to go into reverse. You can see no 360 camera. The car does have parking sensors, but you can see the graphics are old. It also doesn't take up the entire screen, which is a little disappointing. Kick it back to go into drive and then push this P button here to go into park. The one thing this car is seriously lacking, however, you can see there's another cup holder here, is any place to put my cell phone. A cell phone barely fits in here. Uh, my 12 Pro Max does not fit in there. And then you can see opening this up, you can see that's where I typically have to put my phone. Uh, there's no wireless phone charging pad in here. You have two USB-A charging ports, a 12 volt power outlet in there. And you can see here, when this is open, it's not in the most comfortable position. I actually have to keep this closed. And this also gets pretty hot uh, when you have the roof down and the sun's beating down on it. You can see opening this up, that's how you access the convertible top. Obviously it's raining outside right now, so I'm not gonna put the top down. This basically controls all of the windows, including the little back quarter window, if you wanna open and close that. Uh, over here, you can see there's a nice grab handle for the passenger. The seats are very comfortable and supportive. Love the seats in this car. Uh, they are among the plushest that I felt, uh, and it really reminds you that Lexus does great seats. Uh, this is supposed to open up the glove box, but you can see here, if I push it, it's kind of stuck. But once you open that up, you can see it's very, very small. Uh, it's damp and it's lined with felt. You have rear seat or you have vents over here. Uh, for the front passenger as well. And then the materials are just really, really nice. Now, uh, above me, you can see there is um, LED map lighting. You have an auto dimming rearview mirror. And then the back seat, as you can see, I'm not gonna get back here, is supposed to fit uh, two people, but you can see, looking by the leg room, you can see it has no leg room. You have to basically move this front seat forward, which again, it's gonna eat into your leg room space. Lexus claims there's like 26 inches of leg room back here, but that's probably when this seat is actually slid forward. So again, you're gonna use the back seats primarily for stuff or maybe really small children. Uh, I guess it's nice that it's there, but overall the cabin, aside from the dated infotainment system, my tester is lacking the heads up display, which is an extra thousand bucks. Uh, it is still a very nice place to spend time. And it also looks special. I'm just not entirely sure I would go with this toasted caramel interior. I'd probably go for the red interior myself. So here we are back in the stunningly gorgeous Lexus LC convertible. And it's pretty hard for me to believe that this car has been on the market for almost five years now. It is due for a significant refresh, although surprisingly Lexus has basically made little changes to the car other than just introducing the convertible uh, and introducing those uh, inspiration series, those limited production cars. But regardless, uh, it's been over a year since I drove this car, so I figured it was time to do an updated review, get some zero to 60 performance, see if this car truly is still a desirable car, a worthy alternative to something like a Porsche 911, a BMW 8 Series Grand Coupe, a Mercedes SL, which by the way, all of those are great cars, but we're driving the convertible with the V8. This is the engine that you want. Uh, and I never actually had a chance to zero to 60 test this car. So we'll go ahead and we'll do that. We'll turn off the traction control. This car sort of has launch control, not really, but we'll just brake torque it. God. <laughs> wow, that was good. <laughs> I wasn't expecting it to be bouncing on the rear tires a lot. My tester, I don't believe, has the limited slip diff. Uh, but I got 4.8 seconds there, 0 to 60. That's with uh, it kind of spinning the wheels around. So we'll try it again. We'll see if we can get a slightly better time with a little bit better traction. Remember, this car is only rear-wheel drive. Lexus doesn't offer an all-wheel drive version. They do offer a hybrid, but if you want the hybrid, you're stuck with the coupe. This car begs to be driven as a convertible. Uh, and also when you have that top down, you just, you hear the noise of the engine so much better. So you basically want to have the V8 and you want to put the top down because that engine is just absolutely sexy. It's still one of the best sounding engines that you can buy today. But let's go ahead and just try it one more time. I'll leave the traction control on this time and just floor it. <laughs> wow, 4.82 there. That's with no wheel spin. We'll try it again further down the road. But <laughs> I can never get tired of that noise. Now I am noticing after a few years on the market, this naturally aspirated V8, you definitely get a sense that it lacks torque. I mean, it's an engine that begs to be revved out. Uh, it actually sounds better as it goes further down the rev range. And that's the whole point of an engine like this is you want to hear it rev. The 10 speed auto is a Lexus Toyota design transmission. And when you start playing with the paddles. Oh, oh, oh God, listen to that thing as it shifts. Oh my God, that sound. That is the whole point of a car like this is just listening to that. V8 engine roar, ripping right behind your head. Oh my God. The exhaust also has a valve in it that opens up when I have it in Sport Plus. 
And then it has a special intake that opens wide, basically, as I uh, swing the tack needle past 5,000 RPM. Oh my God, and for a car that weighs 4,500 pounds, the LC does a really great job at hiding its weight. I mean, you get a sense that it's a grand touring car, but the steering is really precise, it's really quick. It actually transmits a good amount of feedback from the tires to the steering wheel, which is nice. Un it's very surprising for a car like this. Oh God, that sound. You gotta love a naturally aspirated V8. There's nothing else really like it. Oh, God, jeez. Oh, what a fantastic car. <laughs> Never ever get tired of that noise. That noise is just music to my ears. I'm gonna be sad when uh, these kind of vehicles basically go away because of everything's going electric, which is kind of sad again, but let's try it one more time here. We're just gonna floor it from a stop. <laughs> All right, 4.7 seconds there. I'll take that number. That's basically bang on a little bit slower than Lex Lexus claims 4.6, but you know, it's, it's amazing to me that we live in a world where, you know, a 4.7 seconds zero to 60 time is quick. It's just not impressive anymore. You can get electric vehicles that'll smoke this car all day long, but they also won't sound as good as this. <laughs> oh my God, this car. I've missed the sound of this engine. And, and if you guys buy this car with the hybrid, you are doing yourself a disservice because the hybrid, I've driven it a couple times, is technically slower and less powerful than this car. Uh, around town, the hybrid might feel a little bit more, you know, sprightly because of the low end torque. This engine feels so soft from down low that you really have to rev the crap out of it. It's not until the tack needle swings past 3000 where you get any sort of power from the engine. But then you get the noise, the feel of it, the auroral pleasure of it. It's just, it's such a joy. It really is an experience that uh, I'm gonna miss in the long run. Now, um... <laughs> now in terms of the rest of the drive modes here, this car in Sport Plus surprisingly still feels really supple to drive. The adaptive dampers, even though they're in their firmest setting, still provide a really good ride quality. If you want, you can put it into like comfort where the exhaust will get a little bit quieter. Um, but really, I found the this car is really easy to daily drive in Sport Plus. It, it just, the, the only thing you'll notice is the transmission will stay out of its higher gears, which is fine because you wanna rev the crap out of this engine to get the most power out of it. It does affect the fuel economy, obviously, when you have it in this mode. In my week's worth of testing, I've barely been able to crest 13 MPG. This is rated at 15 MPG in the city. So yes, you're gonna pay to play for this big V8, uh, but on the highway, it should do around 20 MPG. That's what I was able to get in my weeks for the test. Again, you could do better if you actually drive the car in eco. You have the roof up. When the roof is down, it's gonna use a little bit more in terms of gas because of the aerodynamics. But you know what? With the wind, with the roof down, with the windows up, the wind buffeting here is surprisingly not horrible. You just get a sense of that open air experience, the wind in your hair, you kind of forget about the annoyances of this car, which it has a few annoyances to it. I mean, the infotainment system in it is garbage. This is the old Lexus system. Uh, the fact that Lexus hasn't put their new Lexus interface in here is kind of disappointing. Uh, but the seats are comfortable. The cooled seats also work extremely well, although I think Lexus should consider blowing like an air conditioning vent on the back of my neck, especially uh, during the hotter days. I really would have liked to have cold air blowing around on my neck when the top was down because, you know, it's a convertible. Convertible life means you have to, you know, deal with the compromises of it. But I do like the fact that the soft top is surprisingly well insulated. When the roof is up, this vehicle is surprisingly comfortable and quiet on the inside uh, when you're at highway speeds. But again, right now I have it in Sport Plus. I'm just cruising along. It's such a comfortable car. It really shocks me how comfortable this car is. It's one of the best GT cars that you can buy today. And it's just a joy to drive comfortably and smoothly, but also a joy to drive when you're going a little aggressively. Like again, just put your foot down and you can feel <laughs> ah, <laughs> that noise. Oh. It's a shame to me that Lexus was working on an F version of this car, but I think they've canceled plans of that because they were working on a twin turbo V8. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I just, I think that Lexus has buried that idea because everything's going electric. So I'm worried about the future of the LC, but this car with the V8, if you guys want something like this, pick it up while, you st while it's still available because this is a masterpiece. This is, you know, clear indication of what Toyota and Lexus can do when they really want to cater to enthusiasts. This is a car that isn't like the boring, typical Lexus you find in their lineup. 
it's a car that continues to turn heads and I'm just shocked, even though it's been on the market for five years, everybody still turns their heads when you see this thing out on the road. So after spending a full week with the 2022 Lexus LC 500 convertible, this vehicle reminds me why I fell in love with the car three years ago when I first had a chance to drive it. No, the LC 500 convertible is not the sexiest, sportiest, or even the most prestigious convertible that you can buy, but Lexus has a really well-balanced package here. It's really comfortable to drive on a daily basis out on the road. It will surprise you when you find some corners and the V8 model will reward you when you rev the crap out of it. I got zero to 60 in 4.7 seconds, which again, used to be considered quick, but in today's world, it's really feels a little bit sluggish, especially when you have to rev the crap out of the engine. But this car, I think, will become an instant collector's item because vehicles like this are going to be phased out. It really concerns me is the future of this car. I'm not entirely sure if Lexus is going to actually keep this car in the lineup, if they're going to make it all electric. They could also introduce the hybrid powertrain from the RX 500 HF Sport Performance. That would also be an interesting addition. But really, if you guys are interested in a vehicle like this, the LC just feels incredibly well made and well engineered, like it's going to last a long time and that's the whole point of buying a Lexus product. Now speaking of which, if you guys are looking to purchase this vehicle, Lexus actually managed to sell the most that they've ever sold in all of 2021 with about 2,800 units sold. That was a little bit more than when the first year this car came out back in 2017. And at a starting price of around 94,000 for, for the coupe, about 8,000 more for the convertible, 102 grand for this model here. My tester here is lightly optioned at around $106,000, uh, basically including the wheels, the Mark Levinson sound system. I think at $106,000, obviously a six figure price tag on a Lexus convertible is expensive, but if you're gonna be looking at this car's competitors like from Porsche, from BMW, Mercedes, uh, and from Bentley, they're gonna cost roughly fifty dollars to $100,000 more. So in that sense, you could look at this car as kind of like a bargain, and you also can count on this car to last an incredibly long time because it is wearing the Lexus badge. With all that said, hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on the 2022 Lexus LC 500 convertible. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews, like us on Facebook, and as always guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.